stand for the reading of the word in the book of Ephesians chapter number four Beginning the reading of God's holy word in verse number 13, 11, I'm sorry, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth, in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, for whom, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So far, the reading of the word of the Lord. You may be seated. One of the key words that Stan jumps out to me in verse number 12 is the word ministry. And so let me take a moment to define that particular word to you, or what I think it means. Somebody say ministry. ministry. We talk about ministry, and even though you may know what it is, a lot of people still are not operating and functioning in ministry. Ministry is simply the act of serving. If we were to define it, it means to work for someone or to wait on someone. The Apostle Paul's entire life was committed to serve the will of God. That's what he lived for. He was a diakonos meaning he waited even on tables if that's what he had to do. He was a servant. Will you touch your neighbor and just say that word to them because it's not one that we use often in church. Say you're a servant. Now, a servant leader as well as a servant serves without recognition. You are not to become a servant in the kingdom so that you can be a celebrity. That is not the goal of serving. You are to serve without promotion. I remember when I was in Florida, so many things the bishop does not know. <laughs> and uh, I moved from New York to Florida. I had no idea. Bishop McKinley said, you're moving to a spiritual wasteland. I, I didn't know how to drive a car. There was no public transportation like Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, none of that. No subway. So suddenly I'm stuck. So I get a job and somebody's got to carry me back and forth until I learn to drive. And my first job was in a mail room. So in those days, the saints didn't wear pants. Y'all do remember that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, let me say that for people that don't, you know, understand. There was a time when saints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a job, Bishop, in the mail room. And I would fuss every day because I had a lot of pride. I got this college degree like it was a big deal. And I'm working in this mail room. So I'm the only one in the mail room with a skirt on, a jean skirt. So I, I had to, I, my job was to deliver mail all through the building. You know, I had to work the little thing, put mail in, then take it out. And then after lunch, you put it in a little grocery cart, and you take it to whatever office. So I'm walking. I'm talking, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about promotion. So I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. And 
down the hall, I had to take the freight elevator. Sanctified me, glory to God. College educated me, me, on the freight elevator in a jean skirt. So this, this particular afternoon, I'm walking down the hall and I'm mad, I'm fussing. I went to college and this is what I thought. Don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And I got halfway down that hall and I heard a voice speak to me. God, I'm not talking about that inner voice. I'm, I'm talking about the kind that came from heaven that, that, that you, I started turning around. The voice said, when will you give me the reins of your life? And I looked around, I said, surely somebody is behind me that's talking like that. Sure, surely. I looked over this side. I looked behind. It was a no one in the place. And God began to speak to me. And I had to understand. I said to him, I was so frightened and humble that he would interrupt my day. What kind of foolishness was going on in my heart? And I said to him, if I have to push this mail car, for the rest of my life, I'll do it until Jesus come back. A servant, it does not promote themselves. Mm. I could stay there a minute, but I, I, I'm going to move on. This is not a job where you hand out cards. Call me. Put a big Facebook ad. No, true servants don't look for promotion. They know that promotion comes from above. A real servant does not serve with superiority over the master. You're not trying to be greater than the master. So what happens? So God alone must search the earth. He got to search to find because not everybody has the heart of a servant. So he must search the earth to find those who have the heart to serve and those that have the character to submit to his divine will. I'm preaching this morning on what kind of pastor are you. So now when God finds that person, he calls them pastor, my God, and sets them in his church for the work of ministry. Now, Calls the pastor, finds them, calls them pastor, sets them in the church so that from that point on, the life of the pastor and the destiny of the church are supernaturally entwined. If we were very quickly to do this, this thumb, your anchor thumb, represents the apostle because it is the foundation. The apostle lays the foundation. This is the finger that, is, that represents the prophet. Because this finger, your index finger, points. That's what the prophet do. Get up. Stand in the house. I see it. I see it. I see it. Prophets, prophets don't successfully pass the churches. Because they cannot ground them. They see. Then this finger is a finger that represents the evangelist. Because it's the longest finger that represents outreach. Evangelist reaches out. But we get here. There's no ring finger. If you put a ring on these fingers, that's they play play rings. Yeah, they're cosmetic. They cosmetic. But when you stand at an altar, if you ever married anybody, if they put your ring on the wrong finger, you better get out of that quickly. Look at this. So this finger represents the pastor. It is the finger that is supposed by the ancients where the vein, the artery of it, runs straight to your heart. Yeah. So it is if God takes the pastor, takes the church, and marries them. Marries them. Now, now just like a regular marriage, you don't like your spouse sometime. <laughs> so you struggle with the pastor who is married to you. 
one thing I know about marriage is that person that you are married to does know stuff about you. They do. They know your moods. They know when to talk to you, when to say something or not say something. Am I talking to couples in here? Uh -huh. And it's just like that when you have a leader, they, they, they are able to sense your foolishness. They're able to sense. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> so Jesus declared in Matthew 16 and 18, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And this prophetic word became a reality in the earth on the day of Pentecost, when Peter, the church, first New Testament pastor. He preached his first sermon and received 5,000 members. My God. The church. We are the church. Ah, look at your neighbor and tell him we are the church that Jesus died for. The church is the fellowship of men who have accepted the Christ's offer into the kingdom and have submitted to its rule and entered into its blessing. The church is eternal and the church is everlasting. We are that church. The church is God's army of power and deliverance on the earth that is tasked with defeating the kingdom of Satan and delivering the souls of men and the souls of women through the preaching of the gospel. Now in giving people, uh, listen here, the church, according to 1 Timothy 3.15, is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. The church is the apple of God's eye. It is the crown of glory and a royal diadem in the hand of God. It is purchased with the shed blood of Christ. It is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. It is the light of the world in a crooked and perverse nation. It was purchased by Christ's blood on Calvary's cross and the church belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church is not a social club, does not need a director. The church is not a fundraising organism, it does not need a grant writer. The church is not a political entity. It does not need a politician to head it. It is not a welfare center. So it does not need a social worker. This supernatural church of the Lord Jesus Christ can only be pastored and cared for by the fivefold ministry. It is not a church where the deacons take over. It is not the church of the trustees. But the church has been delivered to the hand of the pastor teacher. His finger represents the teacher. So look what God did. He, according to Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, God gave men as gifts to the church to ensure the longevity of the church and the effectiveness of the church. He took men, took people, and he gave them. He said, I'm going to give this person my heart. Jeremiah 3.15, I'll give you passes after that. He takes men and he says, I'm going to pour my spirit, my breath into you. And then he, he, he says, now you have me in you. And now I want you, I'm going to send you to represent me to the body. So when the pastor, apostle, evangelist, whatever, but the pastor and the teacher stands before you, they have been poured into. I, I, I want to stop here a moment because he takes his time to prepare who he's going to set before you. He whips us and he strips us. God help me. And he breaks us until we holler, ah, yes, Lord. 
So, yeah, he, he just don't find an individual and say, I'm going to give you my heart and I'm going to give you my spirit. After he finds him, then he has to fish. He got to cut him. I got to cut that piece of you off. And then he says, when he looks at him, that's the potter Jeremiah said. I went down, I heard the boy say, come on down to the potter's house. When I went down, he had, he had taken the pottery and he broke it up because he had to make it again. So when giving people as gifts to his body, to his sheep, Jesus is actually giving himself. So in Hebrews 3 and 1, he is called the apostle and the high priest. In Deuteronomy 18 and 15, Jesus is the prophet spoken of by Moses. In Luke 4, 18 to 19, Jesus is the great evangelist. In John 10, Jesus is the pastor shepherd. And in John 3 and 2, he is the consummate teacher. So to properly understand the gift of the pastor, we must all agree, say I'm in agreement, that the pastor is the embodiment of Jesus Christ, giving himself for the church. The pastor has been given as a reflection of the heart of God for his sheep. The heart of God is the wisdom, the purpose, and the forethought of God. And out of his heart emerge human gifts shaped and fashioned to serve his people. The pastor has been appointed to supply knowledge and understanding. How then do we define pastoral ministry? Number one, the pastor is a shepherd. Mm -hmm. The Greek word is poemen. It's used 16 times in the New Testament, and it is translated shepherd. And while Jesus is the sheep, chief shepherd, the pastor is what is called the under-shepherd of the flock. And this term describes the ministerial function of the pastor, which is the sincere, intimate, loving, spiritual care of the flock. Now, according to Isaiah 40, verses 10 through 11, it lists the five basic functions of the pastor shepherd. Number one, the pastor is set into the house to rule the house. Ruling means govern the house, to be in charge of the house. Secondly, to feed the house, to tend to it, to gather, to secure and generate trust, to carry Many times the shepherd will carry the sheep in times of stress and in times of trouble. And finally, the fifth thing, to lead. The shepherd sets the pace of the house. He cannot move too fast because not everybody can keep up. So he must set the pace. And so good shepherds were diligent. Good shepherds were dependable. They were brave. And a uh, shepherd in the field carried a rod with them, Come on. carried a knife with them, carried a staff with them, and I like this one, carried a slingshot. So that when one of the sheep act like they didn't know how to follow nobody. He take that slingshot. Then, I like this part, he would take a reed pipe and he would blow the pipe and soothe the flock. Now, there are four types of sheep personality. So, in every congregation, there's Four different types of sheep. The first one is the solitary sheep. Now this sheep constantly f strays from the flock and will not eat with the rest of the flock. He is the loner of the flock. Now why is this sheep solitary? Fear of exposure is common among solitary sheep. Solitary sheep fear a secret sin may be exposed by God to the shepherd. So they don't want to stay around the shepherd. My, 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 my. 
Because a shepherd might open their mouth. Sometimes you just do it and they don't even know that you're doing it. Some are merely, I like this part. Some solitary sheep, however, are just merely looking for attention. They separate themselves to be noticed. Then there is a hermit sheep that avoids the rest of the flock for different reasons. The hermit sheep strays away from the flock to avoid being sheared by the shepherd. It will do anything to avoid the clipping process. This sheep will not participate in the activities of the other sheep because it's trying to make a statement to the flock and to the shepherd. I'm, it's me. Just deal with me. They refuse to take correction and advice from the pastor. Their unclipped hair has grown so long that it covers their eyes and they cannot see that the path they are headed down is dangerous. They will influence other sheep and slow the flock down if the shepherd does not leave them behind. Then there is the wandering sheep. Am I boring you? Okay, okay. The wandering sheep is the most dangerous of them all. To the wandering sheep, the grass is always greener somewhere else. So he's looking for a way out of the sheepfold. And when I was studying this, I couldn't put everything on the paper. And it said he'll look for a loose, loose piece of uh, uh, um, the fencing. Yeah, he'll look, look for, for some kind of, you know, way, some opening. Just anything, he'll find a way that he'll be able to escape the flock. Lord have mercy. He spends his time looking for escape and finds a way to flee. This sheep, however, never settles down to enjoy the present pasture. And he breeds discontent among the other sheep. And because of his bad influence and example, he especially affects the young of the flock. The offspring of a wandering sheep will take the example of his parents and never settle down under the authority of a shepherd. That's scary right there. That's scary. That's... Then there is finally the cast sheep. A cast sheep has first been a solitary sheep, a hermit sheep, and a wandering sheep. And it's an old term in shepherding called cast down sheep. It's a pathetic sight because you find the shepherd finds the sheep lying on his back, his feet in the air, flaying frantically, struggling because it cannot get up. Sometimes it will bleat for help, but generally it lies there lashing about in frightened frustration. And if the shepherd does not arrive on the scene in time, within a reasonable short time, the sheep will die. Mm -hmm. This is why your pastor, your, your, your bishop, sees, wants to see you. We have to see you because we need to know, are you lying down and can't get up? To make sure, what, so what a shepherd does, he counts the sheep. I'm trying to get some of y'all that members to understand because you, you go in and out. You're here on first Sunday. You're not here on second Sunday. You don't come during the week. And then when somebody in your household gets sick or you get, house, you, how, you get sick, you blowing the church line up. Oh, I'm, I, maybe I should have. But the reason that the pastor looks for you is that he needs to make sure that you're still standing on your feet. There are four cast sheep diseases. There's white muscle disease caused by lack of vitamins because you refuse to eat with the rest of the sheep. So let me say right there, this, there must be fellowship in the sheepfold. Preach, Barnett. There must be fellowship. You can't act like you're, you, you just by yourself in the church. You are part of the church. You are called to be saints. You can't get rid of me, and you, I can't get rid of you. And this, this brings me here. I didn't plan it to, but I'm going to talk about the overview of Ephesians. I know it's late. 
Just give me five minutes. Uh, can I get three people to give me five minutes? Then there's a foot, there's a foot rock disease. So what's the foot rock disease? It means that the sheep has been stagnant so long. And what, 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 what does it, you've been stagnant so long and you lay down that what happens is he lays down, the sheep does, and then all of a sudden if he make one wrong move, he, he, he gets in a position where he can't get back up. And what this does, it causes the sheep to not be quick and alert. Then there are parasites. This one really got to me. The parasites burrow into the flesh of the sheep. So there are times when your, your leader will look at you and see something. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, something wrong. They look at your faith. Mm -mm, a parasite done slipped up in there somewhere. Because you're talking some foolishness. You're talking something that don't nobody know what you're talking about. What you're talking about? We saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. And then you come up there. Well, I don't know if we should celebrate birthdays. Because a parasite done got up in there. And so what happens is then there's twin lamb disease, and, and that's caused by, by low blood pressure due to stress. So what the, what the shepherd has to do, literally, is to examine you. Now, this is the part you don't like. You do not like personal examination. Preach. Preach, preach, Because you're sitting here looking like I'm crazy. So he got a knife. And he's got the oil. And he's looking at you and he sees that you're wounded. Oh, but not today, 2019. Oh, you got everything together. You're so wonderful. You're you just a wonder all by yourself. And ain't you got all kind of parasites and disease. You don't even know how to come out to church anymore. You don't even know how to raise your hand because something has gotten hold of you. So you don't want the leader. You don't want them to examine you. You don't want them to look in your eye. Now remember, they represent God. God has poured himself in them. So it's not really them looking at you. It's the power of the spirit of God that's looking at you. And they see. They see you been with somebody. Oh, 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 oh. They see you messing with somebody. You sitting under preaching and you're messing. You're sitting under worship and you're messing around. You're tagging each other. You're calling people when you ought not to be calling. You're making midnight booty calls. And they come out here lifting your hands. Oh, oh. Then, 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 mm -hmm. you don't want the pastor to say, and you run from the pastor. I hear the Holy Ghost. You run. You find a way to make sure that you don't ever get a chance to speak to him. You run. Oh, I'm talking to people right up there in that booth, right up there, right up there, right up there in that booth. Uh huh. I'm talking to you. You don't come down and greet the bishop. You don't come down and hug her and say, God bless you, bishop. Thank you so much. Here's a little $5. I ain't got much, but let me put this in your hand. No, you're trying to run out this door. Oh, what door is she coming out of? Uh, let me go out the other door so I can get in my car. Because you know, you know, God, it is Christ that called you a sheep. God called you a sheep. Oh, but you don't want to be a sheep because a sheep is submissive. A sheep lays down. A sheep allows the, the, the shepherd to, to clip it, to share it. But I stand flat footed and I come against a spirit of independence that has been dragged in here. Oh, you got friends with people that tell you it don't take all of that. Let me tell you something. It takes all of that and more. I come
something. It's a spirit. Make you independent. Like you, like you just made up this church all yourself. You just come in here whatever you want. Just not in my notes. Yeah, you are you a wonder. Yeah, look at your neighbor and say you a wonder. That's what you think you are. And I cast the spirit of being a wonder out of church right now. You ain't no wonder. You just a servant. I tell two or three people, you just a servant. Come out of, come out of foolishness. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you this afternoon that godly parents and godly pastors are now an endangered species. Yeah, you wouldn't even know a pastor no more. Because by the time they put on tight jeans, put on $500 tennis shoes, got holes in the knees, with a body shirt, and coming out trying to lead a congregation of rebellious people. You don't know who the pastor is. The pastor doesn't even have a seat in the house. The pastor must be observed in the house. The, you must know when you come in here, where is the bishop of this house? She does not sit among you. Thirty-three percent of pastors leave churches due to conflict with the congregation and most conflict in the church that causes a pastor to leave is due to fewer than eight people. Clergy divorce risen 65% the last 20 years. 71% of pastors say they're having financial problems. 37 churches are closing every day and only 14 are being planted to replace them. This is a net loss of 8,395 churches. Let me say to you, if you have a problem with this church, Go start one. Let me see how you do. Call me. 561-502-5197. I want you to go start one. I want you to go start one and you know God ain't called you. You let them people let you boost you up. We don't have to take all of this. Come on, I, I, I saw a little room down the street. You got to be called to this office. You have to be called to this office. If you are not called, you will not survive. Secondly, the pastor is a preacher. Messenger of good news. I, I skipped through some stuff. The preaching pastor descends from a lineage and a heritage of preachers. The preacher is called in the house to be the voice of God. He speaks as, or she speaks as the oracle of God. That's what the Lord is saying. Here now, Moses, uh, Noah, the preacher of righteousness. Moses, the preacher of the law. Solomon, the preacher of wisdom. And so on and so forth. And so now we are responsible to hear the word of the Lord that proceeds from the preaching pastor. Then according to James 1 and 22, hearing must transition to doing what we have heard. And so hearing involves action that is appropriate. Now, now let me say this. Pastors, and I, I'm, I'm one of those, have often wondered is the congregation that they're caring for truly hearing them when they see no outward response or realignment? So sometimes, say amen. amen. <laughs> yeah, get off your high horse. Your sanctified self. Your, you, you know, your educated, your PhD, DD, D self. <laughs> and say hallelujah to the word of God. And encourage the preacher in the house. That's a good place for you to praise God right there. Yeah. 
And if we do not hear the word of God from the pastor and begin to live as though the word does not apply to us, it is if you have gone to a medical specialist and they have told you and diagnosed you with a health disorder and then you get, you just get up, you listen to the doctor and then you get up and you just go home and say that's all right and you don't do anything about it. That's what it is when you do not respond to your pastor. Paul looked in our time and warned the Ephesian elders and others that the flock would be shaken because of false preachers entering in to devour the flock. This is in Acts 20. The preaching pastor must preach truth and doctrine. Time. So the pastor, the pastor is a shepherd. He is a preacher and he is a prophet. Help me. The pastor stands in the pulpit and prophesies the direction of the house. Prophesies which way we're going. This is where we're going. This is our vision. This is our mission. And when you have a prophet pastor, it means that they have been through what I call seven stages of prophetic development. Coming from the book of First Kings. They have walked like Elijah to the place of cutting. I'm not taking time to go there. Where you have to be tested for your perseverance. Will you sit in this brook and let this raven feed you? Yeah. The prof, the prophetic. You have a prophetic pastor in this house who has been through Cherith and when the book brooks dry up you don't throw up your hands because the next place is prepared Zarephath the place of refinement and then the preaching prophet must pass through Mount Carmel the place of power and manifestation it's called El Mukraha, the place of burning. Notice there is no feeding here. This is where you have been trained thus far to manifest the glory of God. So when you have a leader, that leader did not just get a degree and get a key and open a door to a storefront. Before they do any of that, they stand and they have met the juniper tree. The place of despair. They have been by Mount Horeb, the place of divine revelation. They have been by Abemahola, the place of reflection and duplication, where they train others. Don't you see her training them? And finally, the place of Jordan. They cross over. So, how do we respond as Pastor Angel spoke to us? We're intertwined with the pastor. You can't get rid of God's leader. Let me say that to any group that is trying to have a vote in the privacy of your house. Let me say that to little, little, little pew pastors, as I talked about at 730, who gather little people around them and start talking about the leader. Come on over here. You don't, you don't need to go over there. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I speak to that right now because I prophesy in this house. Somebody lift your hands, Minister. Pastor George, let's play something. I got to bring some of this in. There's a fullness, Bishop, that you have been waiting to experience. You watch the flock and there are things that you did not like that you saw. And when you're the shepherd, you can't even really talk about it to anybody. I mean, you could try to, to speak about it. But not everybody understands the depth of it. What does it feel like when you have a flock and you got dividers in the flock. I wish I could do it like I see it. 
where you have certain, I'm talking about human sheep now. Pastor Brian, just using you. He got two or three over here. Pastor Diane got four or five over here. They call her for prayer. They don't call nobody else. Then Colleen got five or six over here. You know, you only know about it when you hear an announcement. We're having prayer at our house. Anybody that needs prayer come by this house. And so the whole, the flock is divided. And it takes the Holy Ghost of God. And the eyes of the bishop see. She can't beat you. Because if she beats you, she'll lose the ones you have gathered around you. So she had, the, the bishop then, pastor has to stand and preach until the eyes of the people open. And they say, wait a minute. This is my pastor. This is my pastor. The thing that I did not like about pastoral ministry was that it involved people. With my size six self, I was an usher in Elam. In a moment that Bishop Kenley said, oh man, I would rush, I was a business administrator of the church at the time, and I would rush out the side door, just like how I just talked about it. I rush out the side door, and I go in the office, because, you know, I got to count and do all that stuff. And one Sunday afternoon, this shepherd saw me. Jacked me up against the wall. He said, you're called to serve the people of God. She said it a little differently from the nice way I just said it. But I didn't like people. People hurt. But here you are accepting the challenge of pastoral ministry. And you're dealing with all ages dealing with millennials, you're dealing with varying cultures, different backgrounds, nationalities, you're dealing with choleric personalities, sanguine personalities, phlegmatic personalities, melancholies, and along with people come money problems, relationship problems, health problems, family problems. But God said, I have poured into you, and I have equipped you to stand before these people. At 42 years old, Robert McKeehan, a pastor, hung himself. At 42 years old, Teddy Parker Jr., a pastor shot himself. 36-year-old Isaac Hunter killed himself. Prophet Egg Montgomery shot himself. The pressure of pastoring people that don't like you, that don't hear you, The one who prays for you every day goes to God on your behalf, studies to get better equipped to serve you, who lives in a glass house, 
feeds us the word of God every week, sacrifices more than we will ever know. No, we question their skills. We question their biblical insight. We question their decisions and their leadership performance. And suddenly we become a personal battering ram. become a battering ram. Come here, Sister Jennings. The battering ram toward the pastor that you don't like is not a stick or anything. It's you. It's you. That flips off. He said, I don't want, you talk in her face. You speak to her. And then you know what? Then you get up. This is how it happened. Then you go over here to him. You believe she told me so and so and so. <laughs> this church is growing and exploding. And every battering ram, I bind you up in Jesus' mighty name right now. Every antichrist spirit, every antichrist anointing, every Jezebel spirit, every spirit that comes against the preaching, the word of the Lord, against this preaching pastor, I bind it in Jesus' name. I, I, I just wish you would just give me a little bit of warfare right now and just clap your hands. While you clap your hands, say, wash me. We will never receive the benefit of the leader in the house if we are not washed, if we are not cleansed from the filthiness of our own pride, our own flesh. There must be a pastor in the house and you must pay allegiance to that leader. And I say to you, Bishop McCullough, it may be unnecessary, but perhaps someone is watching. Paul writes this. He has written the church in Coloss because they had gone into angelology. He had to deal with that. He had to stop that heresy. And while it is on his mind, he talks about the oneness of the church. And while it's on his mind, he pins this to the church in Ephesus. Ephrahad, Ephrathitis, what is his name? And he, and he talks about, he said there must be unity in the body. One body. One, one father. One. We must be one. And so chapter number four gives us an overview of how the oneness happens. Why? And he gave some. It is referring to Psalm 68. He that ascended is the same that descended and brought gifts. In other words, he, he won the battle on Calvary's cross. And, and he brought back gifts, but he didn't bring back cologne and pocketbooks. He brought back says I'm going to establish them I need five quickly stand the apostle the prophet the evangelist I need two more the pastor and the teacher and the language of the text I didn't read it but the language of the text binds the pastor and teacher together so they cannot be separated. So he says, these are my gifts. This is what I've given you. I, I, I send it on high. Gave my blood to my father. Then I descended to let the devil know I won the battle. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church because I'm giving men 
as gifts. So how do you know how to treat your gift? I honor you, Bishop McCullough. I honor you, Dr. Adams, 46 years. I honor the leaders of this house. I honor you, Pastor George. We are gifts. Lift your hand and declare, I'm a gift. I call books out of you. I call books out of you. You shall be a defendant of the faith. You shall write this books that give us the passageway to the next level now here's the thing and I'm, I'm, I'm ending what type of pastor are you according to the book of Hebrew chapter number 13 pastor is going to stand before God he's going to say how was Beth Rafa how did they treat you and what you do not want is your pastor to be crying you don't want your pastor to have no handkerchief going crying because they got to tell the truth Anija gave me a hard time Suzette gave me a hard time. Lift your hands. I remove people in your house that do not stand in agreement with you. I loose the power of the pastoral that is upon you. I loose what is tied up in your belly. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, this is not meant to embarrass you in any kind of way. The Abosha, spend time with me because I want to do something great through you. I want to do something on the island through you because others have sat down and have not done anything, but I want to use you, saith the Lord. But I need you to shepherd them. Shepherd them. Shepherd them. not apologize for not making you dance. I don't apologize for that. You're going to stand before God. You better hear me up in here. You're going to stand before God. And every word that your leader ever said to you when they said, come to church and you decide, I'm not coming out there. I got to study for a test. And they're saying, come. And I spoke. Oh I'm speaking to rebellious spirits in this house. You know you rebellious. Lift your hand and act like you're not rebellious. Lift your hand just for my benefit so I don't run in your direction and lay my hands on you. Come on, just lift your hand. Lift your hand, Robinson. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Don't let me come over there and lay my hands on you. Why don't you come over here and let me Oh so many stuff you don't like You don't like stuff You don't like stuff You got complaints I'm about shaking You don't like certain stuff But I didn't call you to like stuff I call you to train you I call you to make you A man of God Say it the Holy Ghost Shut your mouth Keep your attitude on the cross of Jesus Christ. And I bind the spirit of rebellion and resistance. 
You're supposed to be further than you are right now. You know you're behind. God, help me, help me, help me, help me. You know you're behind. You know you're behind. You better open your mouth. You better open your mouth and say, help me, Lord. You're behind. You're behind. You're behind. Open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Give God an eternal yes. Oh, you ain't saying nothing. You ain't saying nothing. Come on, I need somebody to pray with and pray. Don't you, don't you dare go back to this. I had a pastor finishing. I had a pastor, Adams, you know, got in a backslidden place. And he would come to my church early in the morning. I get to church early. And he said, I need some money. Can you give me? Can you give me? Fifty dollars, can you give me something? Yeah. I didn't rebuke him. I said to him, because he was my pastor, I said, certainly. I said, let me write you a check for a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. He said, No, no, I need some cash right now. I need some cash. I need some cash. And I would say, Okay, Bishop. He may have fallen, but it's not for me to disrespect him. And I deal with the level of disrespect. I'm trying to get away from it and I know I need to stop. Start respecting the house and respecting the leader of whatever house you go to. It may not be this one. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you. I want him to go on a three-day fast. Brother Josh, talk to him and tell him I want him to go on a three-day fast. You know you need to be further in God than you are right now. As quickly as you can, find your way to this altar. It's only going to take me... It's not going to take me long. You know you're supposed to be further in God. But you don't let people rob you of your anointing. Rob you from the sheepfold. Come quickly. Come quickly. Just stop right there, right there, right there. Come on, wherever you are, just come on. Just come on. I surrender. softly very softly your ministry depends on how you treat your shepherd yeah if you don't treat your shepherd well while you in your little baby stages of ministry you'll never get nowhere as you honor them God will send people that honor you I'm going to pray for you, but I'm putting my foot down. I, come on, Overseer Robin, help me. Come here, Lashley. We're going to put our foot down. Just shift out of that for just one moment. Just one moment, because I'm sensing something else. I'm about Ben Deke. Come on, come on, Brian, David. Come on, you. No. Come on, Diane, hold his hand. Excuse me for not the titles and everything. Excuse me. I heard the Holy Ghost say, put your foot on it. Everything that has been sent to attack this house, to impede its growth, and to slow down the finances. We're going to stop 
And I hit the Lord saying I was going to do like three times. The Holy Ghost reminded me of the man with the arrow that, that, that you know, that didn't, only did it three times. The Holy Ghost said, no, no, no. You got to stomp this out because something has come in. Mm -hmm. It's come in. It's come in. And I, I want to push the bishop to another level. I want to push her. I want to be streaming internationally. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's a church in London. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to move to London. Yeah, to pastor the church. It's, a, it's an international ministry. Are you ready? We're going to stomp however many times. I just need some stomping music, Pastor George. And if you want to stand with me and stomp, if you're a leader in this house, just stomp. Just put your foot on it. Ground it under. I know the Boshika is under our feet right now. In Jesus' name, every spirit that's not like God, every demon that has come in and taken a place, we step on it. In Jesus' mighty name, we stop it. Come on, Alliance pastors, put your foot on it. Come on, Brian, put your foot on it. Don't do that. Let me, I'm gonna just lay my hands on it quickly. Come on. I speak growth. I speak growth. Come on, I Sunday. I speak growth. Grow, grow in the Lord. Grow in God. Grow in Him right now. I speak growth to you. And I command growth. I command growth. I command spiritual growth that you will mature, that you will no longer be tossed to and fro to every wind of doctrine. You on this line, raise your hand and say, I shall grow. This maturity time, this grow up time, this grow up time, this grow up time, this Holy Ghost time for you to step into your place in the name of Jesus. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Ronalabasha, I transfer, I tra settle yourself, settle your mind, settle your mind. I rebuke this double mindedness, I rebuke this back and forth. Loose here, you demon that don't want to give her peace at night. Loose here. I'm going to raise you, I'm going to raise you. I'm going to raise you, I'm going to raise you. I'm going to raise you, I'm going to raise you. I'm going to raise you, I'm going to raise you. Come on, baby, come on. I'm going to raise you, I'm going to raise you. Grow, say, got to grow. I'm going to raise you. I'm laying hands on you, but you're not where you need to be. Grow in grace. Let the gifts perfect you. Let the gifts perfect you. Stop running, stop running. Get grounded. Stop running! Is she here, Obosa? Rokora, ba ba ba, sata. Shenda la ba ba ba, shenda la Obosa. Woo! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Grow, grow right now. Jesus name. Jesus name. Touch your neighbor, say it's maturing time. It's maturing time. It's time to be a saint. Time to be anointed. Time to have, can take your place in God. Grow up in God. Grow up in the things of God. Don't be tossed by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men. Grow up, baby. Grow. Stagnant. You got stagnant. I, re I don't mean to say it like this, but game represent game recognize game. God was leading you in a direction, but you didn't want to go that way. Yeah, you want to go another way. So you don't just decide you're gonna sit yourself, God. So you ain't gonna do nothing. Oh, cause I got a baby. I got a husband. I was I was preaching in London, England with a nine-year-old. 
grabbing hold of my leg. Tell my mommy, don't leave, mommy, don't leave. And I had to pry her fingers off of my leg and said, mommy got to go and do the work of ministry. What you gonna do with what God has placed in you? Lift up your head over foolishness. And I can't talk to you no more because I don't want the Lord to show me no more. I don't want him to show me no more. Loose her. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And say, yes, Lord. I need a yes in this house. I need a yes in this house. Yes. Yes to a new dimension of ministry. Yes to a new dimension. For the Lord is going to restore that which you breath in the earth. Restoration is coming to you. It's grow up time. It's maturing time, baby girl. That's it right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Open your mouth. You ain't saying nothing. You ain't saying nothing. Somebody work with her, work with her. She don't want to open her mouth and say nothing. Come on, tell them yes. Somebody help me. Stop being discouraged. Stop being discouraged. Loose here. I feel like working, I feel like working. Loose here, loose here, loose here. Every devil on you, I command it to get off of you. Open your mouth and say, loose here. He come on the love of shine. He in the love of shine. He come on the love of He come on the love of shine. Come on, strength, 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 strength. Strength in your mind. Strength in your body. Strength come to you. Come on, just keep me right there. Come on. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to move. Lift your hands up. Grow him up. Grow him up, up in grace. Grow him up. Grow him up. Grow him up in grace. Jesus saying, Come on. Come on. He. Precious anointing. Lift up your hands, say, God, anoint me again. Come on. Come on, all these pastors. Come on, lead us. Lift up your hands, say, anoint me again. She don't want to say nothing. Come on. Come on, come here. You better open your mouth. You better open your mouth and count. give God one yes. I command you to praise him. I command you to live holy. I command it. Come on, say yes. Come on, say yes. Clap your hands and say yes, Lord. Clap your hands and say yes, Lord. Clap your hands and say yes, Lord. Lift your hands, Janice Ikanabosha, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be delivered from low self-esteem. Be delivered from it right now. You are who God say you are. Come on, tell him yes. Come on, quickly. Quickly, quickly, lift your hands. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I see things that have stopped you. But in Jesus' name, I put a quickening in you right now. I'm not my shake out of both sides. I put a quickening in you right now. And I'm going to shut up. You're going to make up time. I hear the Holy Ghost say, you're going to make up time. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to make up time. I'm going to make up time. I feel healing in the house. I feel deliverance in the house. I feel strength in the house. Somebody help me say it. He 
Come on, tell him yes. Stop wondering. Stop wondering. Stop wondering. Plant my feet on higher ground. I'm going to ask the pastor to help me. Come on, pastors. Come on, help me, help me. So we can get out of here. Help me. Come on, all of y'all. Takes. Come on. Come on, Carly. You know, my, 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 shine. Come on, Pastor Trish. Come on, Reverend Trish. I know you're going through. But in the midst of the going through, he's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Stop asking me, am I there? I am there.
is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know just to This is the hour to worship. How sweet it is to trust in God. Praise you, Lord. Is Sister Anne still here? She left. She left. Amen. The Lord wanted to pray as she go. We ask that the Lord go with her and keep her from any physical attack. Speak to her heart right now. Command that her heart rate be normal. And on the way home, there'll be no dizzy spells. That she will get home safely to the next spot. We thank you, God, for defining the pastoral ministry, for defining the church's responsibility. I want Corey and Patrice to come stand right here. I need some help. Move quickly. Wherever she is. Come. There's an urgency. Come on, raise both hands. The period of transition is over. The call to arm yourselves and stand on the front line is here. All of your energies and your passions and your desires must be now focused on being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I command that the Holy Spirit sees you afresh and anoints you fully and clearly plant your feet for effective ministry. Come up higher, man, and so. Come on, shipia kusotes. There's a deity and a man Jesus, help me. Glory, 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 glory. There's a man and in him, who give Somebody help me in a moment. There's a room of a Sukudian setting. Come on, Ostia. In a moment. In a moment. In a moment. In a moment. In a moment.
Somebody help me praise. Somebody help me praise. Somebody help me praise. The master's business requires haste. Come on. And I'm almost shaking. And I'm almost so. Come on. Some of us are still dilly dallying. It's time to make your move. Come on, rebel Shabbat. The Kukuman in the Dianso. He didn't give you that much to play with. Come on. Come on. Put it in its place. Put your gift in its place so the church can march on. I dare you to praise him right now. Come on, you're too analytical. You think too well. You need to move well. Somebody help me praise him. It's okay. Come up higher, the Asso. Come up with the Shepherd of a Kuria Sotuch I feel a praise in here now. It's a praise to loose you from your place of analytical plotting. Come on. The gift belongs where it belongs. Come on. Shepherd of the Asso. Kennedy Oshiki. Didi Atukumama. So. Nanadi and Didi Asso. Come here, Conrad. He come over. It's so. I'm finished. I'm finished. We waiting for something special. God said your hour is here. You wait for something to happen to put you on the map. You are on the map. What you talking about? The devil is raging. Those young Christians in Hong Kong are fighting for their life while you sit and contemplate your moment of, of, of ministry. Your moment of discovery. The devil is a liar. Western Christianity is an insult to biblical Christianity. And I command you to back out of your flesh and get a hold of the word of the Lord. Come on, Rebbe Shabbat. Come on, Naman Seke. Come on, Moshe. I feel a praise in the house. Come here, Nicholas. Come on. Shania Sukuma Bohusabas. Did it in the end of the ocean? Glory to God, glory to God. some people to a new level of consecration I said you better move while the water is troubled in here because we getting ready to move to another level of lifting up the name of Jesus 
and establishing truth in the nation of going against heresy and ignorance and making a loud call against anything that defies the gospel of Jesus Christ we just need some workers in here he said you're a gift to the church well act like a gift come on and put your hands together I want to see you praising I want to see you praising I want to hear your praise. Come on and let me hear your praise. Come on and let me hear your praise. It's not about you, it's about the kingdom. It's about your life. It's about your gift. It's about your ability. He chose you to make a difference. Tell your neighbor you're chosen to make a difference. Don't get quiet on me, you better praise him quick. Tomorrow is not promised. You don't know how long you're going to be here. You better do it while you can. Come on, Monias. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just hug somebody and tell them, I got the message today. I got the message. I'm supposed to be a pastor or I'm supposed to be a sheep. But whatever it is, I'm a gift to the body of Christ. And I'm going to bring my contribution. I'm going to show up for service. I'm going to show up to minister. Because my life will never be anything until I do so. I said it ain't going to be nothing. Did you hear what I said? I don't care if you go to Mount Everest. I don't care if you go to Taj Mahal. You ain't going to be nothing until you do ministry. <laughs> hey, uh. Oh, yeah, man, I'm going to say, oh, man, I'm going to say, Oh, mama, oh, yeah, go, go, shower. Hop, sup, hep, hep. Somebody help me, help me, help me, help me, praise him. Just a minute, just a minute. Come on and shift this into a high praise. Hep, 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 hep. Yeah, my soul. You slowful, self-centered spirit. All you think about is yourself. When there's a world to conquer when the kingdom must be advanced before the coming of the Lord. He's coming back for a true church. Righteous church. Glorious church. A ready church. Come on, put your hands together and praise it. Show up for ministry. Show up, show up. Show up for your contribution. We got to give you a special invitation to do ministry. The devil is a liar. Come on. Hi, up it. Oh, hey, man, I'm also hey, man, I'm here. Put your hands together and praise him for the praising of the gifts, edifying of the church, driving out of ignorance, stamping out of heresy. Pillar and ground of truth, cause of Christ, lifting of holiness, taking a standard for the word of God. Come on and praise him now as we attack postmodernism. As we attack integrationism. As we go after get Christian socialism. Evangelical racism. Come on, help me now. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Somebody help me. Help me. Come on, church. If we don't do it, nobody else will. Come on, take a stand against it in the spirit realm. Come on, pull it on down, pull it on down, pull it on down, pull it on down. Suicidal pastors, discouraged leaders, church doors being closed, people giving up the faith, coming after you now. What dare you to help me? Come on, idiot! Great leaders falling. 
We rebuke slander, fornication and adultery, drug addiction and alcoholism in the pulpit. Come on, help me. Somebody work with me, work with me, work with me. In the mighty name of Jesus, the church has called. Let's move on. We are unstoppable. We are unmovable. We are imperishable. The church of the living God. Come on. We are unstoppable. We are unmovable. We are imperishable. Church of the living God. Come on, come on, come on. Step up into territories that we won't talk about. Step up, 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 up. Overturn, overturn every agenda of the same sex community to mute the church in the name of the Lord Jesus. Overturn, 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 overturn. Overturn, overturn. You muzzle me, but I muzzle you in Jesus' name. Hey, get your hands off the word. You can't muzzle the word of God. You went too far. The boundaries have been set. The Holy Ghost is in charge of the pulpit of the true church. And we uphold it. Come on. Put your hands together and let me hear your praises. It is awesome. Come on, church. That's up. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for opportunity. Thank you for opportunity. Back them on Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. The church in Hong Kong. Turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Move the tanks, God. Set the borders. Send angels. Hem them in from infiltration. Give them a space of grace to bring the church in Hong Kong ah, to its fruition. Somebody help me, praise him, help me. Help us all. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, hey. Come on, church. I'm on here, so. Glory, 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 glory. And now, Lord, go by the cage where they have your children caged. That is so. Go by the cage. Snatch the keys. Send the children back to their family. Bust it up, bust it up, bust it up. Go by the boardroom in the house on the hill and bust it up, bust it up. Somebody help me out of Hey, hook, son, hey, shut up, hey, hook, son, hey, 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 Take your hands off that little Mexican girl, you rapist demon. Take your hands off them little girls. Don't you touch them Mexican girls. Ah, don't you touch their breasts or their private parts. I sent a fire against you. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, praise him. Come on. Come on, help me. Come on and help me praise him. Ah, yeah. so, Lord, remember the church in the Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. I hear your cry, Ukraine. Send the Holy Ghost. Set that church on fire. Gather your children in the Ukraine. I hear the Holy Ghost from Ukraine. Burst through there. Hold back Putin. Hold him back. Hold him back. Hold back Putin. Hold him back, God. Hold him back. Hold him back. Hold him back. Don't you touch that territory. We ain't finished yet. Somebody help me. Hey, God. It went over your head. Five, five, five. Come on. I hear you calling me, landlord. I hear you calling me, owner. You want to meet with me? Bye, bye, bye. Oh, God, help me. I got a meeting now. I got a meeting. I got to go meet. Katrina, we got to go meet, baby. We got to go meet. Come on, Pastor George. We got to go meet. We got to go meet. We got some papers to sign. Somebody help me. to you but they're decoded to heaven I don't know what that means and I don't need to know but I know something just touched heaven and something heaven just touched come on praise him one more time See? glory to God glory to God we thank the Lord for making us financially solvent, individually and collectively. Coming out of debt. Coming out of debt. Getting favor. Getting early settlements. Saying you don't have to pay the 100000 just give me $150. Oh, it's being negotiated right now. And you act like you don't need it? You better praise him for the negotiation. Holy Ghost is working it out. 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 
Working it out. Working it out. Working it out. You see, that's how he does it. You talk to the banker, and we speak in tongues. Hey, hey, hey. Disrupt it, God. Disrupt it. Disrupt it. All the plans. All the plans to cripple us financially. Disrupt it, God. Disrupt it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I'm also cool. Come here, Michaela. Come here, Carleen. We anointing you to go to Seton Hall. And you're not going to Seton Hall to find yourself. You already found yourself in the Lord. And we're going to put a hedge around this. Because no shake You're going to come out a Christian. You're going to come out taking a stand for Christ. Come on and praise him one more time. All right, all right. We're a little bit crazy. But help is here. Say your neighbor, help is here. Just got help. Just got help. Oh, y'all don't need help. I said, help is here. Get our shit. Help is here. Tell your neighbor, help is here. Help is here. Help is here. I don't know what kind of help you need, but help is here. Come, Pastor Jocelyn. Come, we're going to shake hands. And you're going to do it one, two, three. One, two, three. We're going to shake my hand. Preserve her health. Preserve her mind. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Preserve her body. That house. 